everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's Melinda with Tailored and Teal. If you're just tuning into this series, I am a part-time reseller on Poshmark, Mercari, and eBay, but this video is going to focus mainly on eBay. However, the knowledge that you learn from it, you can carry into other platforms as well. It is a series of what is eBay talking about? So this time it's jackets. So this is both men and women's. These are under item specifics under style. Strangely enough, the jackets are literally the same for men and women. There are no delineations or there are no extras um, or any taken off. They're the same. So keep that in mind. So a three-in-one jacket is basically a jacket that has multiple layers. It can be zipped together to form one jacket, or it can be taken apart if you're in warmer climate or put on if you're in colder climate. These are perfect for hiking or camping where your climate is going to rise and fall. And I usually think of like the North Face or Patagonia, those types of outdoor clothing. Next is an anorak. The wind and cold were exactly what the Inuits were trying to protect against when they made these anoraks. They would make these out of animal skin and cure them to be waterproof to keep them protective against the elements. And so nowadays an anorak is basically just a pullover waterproof jacket, often with a built-in hood, and it typically will have a front opening and drawstrings at the waist and cuffs. Next is a biker jacket. So this is a short form fitting jacket that has zippers, studs and or buckles or other decorations. It's usually made of leather or synthetic faux leather. And I always think of like bad boys or biker gangs um, when I think of a biker jacket. Next are bomber jackets. Bomber jackets were introduced historically in World War One. It's because the cockpits in the planes were not covered. So any elements would come in. Also, when you're at a higher altitude, it would get colder. So these jackets were specifically made for the pilots. Bomber jacket is traditionally a short, usually waist length jacket that's gathered, has a ribbed waistband and matching cuffs. It usually has a zipper and four or more functional pockets at the tops and sides. Aside from leather, bombers are also made up of polyester, nylon, and cotton. Basically anything to keep you warm. Next is a kimono jacket. So this was not really clear as to what eBay was talking about, hence this video. Um, so a kimono is um, kind of referred to as a cardigan. So it's usually open front. It has longer sleeves, but it's made of lightweight fabric and it's usually good for warm weather days. These cover you up on cold, chilly summer nights. These jackets come in all types of different patterns, designs, and details. Then we have a military jacket. So a military jacket, which is also called a field jacket, was crafted for American soldiers in 1938. It was to protect them against the elements of the tropical climates, and it had lots of pockets for toting rations and extra ammo. In current day, a military jacket is a military inspired coat with pockets in the front and often some inside too. They're usually lightweight and roomy enough to fit multiple layers underneath. Next is a motorcycle jacket. Now, when I Googled motorcycle jacket, it was either you had a fashionable motorcycle jacket, which closely looked like a biker jacket. And then on the other hand, you have an actual functional motorcycle jacket used for riding on motorcycles. So basically a motorcycle jacket is a form fitting aerodynamically designed jacket made of synthetic materials like Kevlar to accommodate high speeds and mobility on the bike. Um, they are typically include heavy padding on the elbows, the spine and the shoulders in case of an accident. A shorter jacket, usually with a zipper in front for easy on and off. Next up is an overcoat. So an overcoat is simply a heavy coat that you put over your clothing, which is kind of what all jackets are, but they're much heavier. And they usually, they originally were made to go over men's suit jackets and blazers. It usually reaches anywhere between above the knee down to the ankle and overcoats are most commonly used in the winter to keep you warm. Next up is a parka, which is very similar to an anorak. A parka is a large and long windproof jacket with a hood designed to be worn in cold weather. The difference between a parka and an anorak is that an anorak is typically waterproof, 
hooded pullover jacket where a parka is a long weatherproof jacket with a fur lined hood. Most importantly, a parka is typically longer than an anorak. And some anoraks have drawstrings at the waist or the cuffs and parkas do not have those details. Then we have a pea coat. A pea coat is a double breasted coat with oversized lapels and a collar that stands up against the neck to protect the wearer from the elements. It's typically made of wool, but can also be made of other synthetic materials, can also be hooded. It was originally worn by sailors and can be mentioned in American newspapers as early as 1720s. So they've been around for quite a while. Next is a puffer jacket. A puffer jacket is filled with down, so duck feathers, or other synthetic materials. Puffer jackets are excellent insulators, which means that they work hard to retain your heat and regulate your body warmth, no matter what the outside temperature is. Puffer jackets are typically lightweight, which makes them easy to wear, easy to store, and easy to pack. Next is a quilted jacket. Quilting refers to any run of any type of stitching, either decoratively or just in a straight run that combines at least two layers of clothing. Often you will find a third padded layer that is interlocking between the fabric, which provides the popular three dimension of a diamond quilted jacket. This can be interchangeable with a puffer jacket if the quilted pattern has insulation materials within the layers. Next is a raincoat. So a raincoat is a waterproof or water resistant coat. You wear it when the weather is crappy and rainy and it's usually longer in length to keep the entire body dry. It typically has a hood to protect you from the elements as well. Uh, modern raincoats are construction from waterproof fabrics such as Gore-Tex and Tyvek and coated nylons. Then we have a trench coat. Trench coats were designed specifically to improve the soldier's fortunes. It was waterproof, but had the ability to keep them warm without adding too much bulk so that they could move quickly. And it also made them better camouflage because they were typically made in a tan color. Trench coats are famous for their double-breasted silhouettes, belts, wide lapels, and military details like epaulettes, which are those big decorative ornamental things that go on the shoulders and storm flaps and pockets and a back vent for movement. Next is a varsity jacket. So it is also called a letterman jacket. It is a baseball style jacket traditionally worn by high school and college students to represent their school and team pride as well to display their personal achievements through either academics or sports. Varsity or letterman jackets trace their origins to the letter sweaters, which were introduced by the Harvard baseball team in 1865. And last on the list is a windbreaker, which can also be called a wind cheater, which I kind of like better. Um, it's thin fabric designed to resist wind chill and rain, and it's usually lightweight and made of synthetic material. A windbreaker often has an elastic waistband to keep it in tight against the body, and um, also elastic armbands around the wrist, and a zipper to allow adjustments for current weather conditions. I like to think of windbreaker sets when they have the pants and the zip up jacket and it makes that swishy noise whenever you walk. Um, those are from like the 80s and the 90s and I always think of that. But of course, they're not as loud and obnoxious as they are in modern days. All right, so that's all we have for jackets. I figured it was a good time to do it now since we're heading into winter months. So if you find yourself listing jackets, keep this knowledge in mind. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. I put out videos at least once a week and I will continue to do these What is eBay Talking About series probably multiple times a month. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.